You've taken a picture of art and you want to post it on a web page or some other forum. The trouble is you have an awful lot of noise around the art. So you grab your trusty crop tool and you surround your piece of art and you crop it. While the situation has improved, you still have an awful lot of space around your artwork. But what to do? I mean, you could crop it more, but that means that you're losing some of the art that you really wanted to post. I suppose you could stretch it, but you've made the artwork distorted so that it doesn't accurately reflect what you're intending. This video is to show you a better way. Hey everyone, CJ Carter here with a useful tip on how to resize and crop artwork so that it accurately represents what the original piece of art actually looks like. Before you start, you want to note what the size of your original is. In this case, this is 16 inches across by 20 inches high. Just note that for later, it'll become important. I'm starting here with an image I took of a work in progress from earlier this year. And as you can see, I have made sure that I could color correct it, which I've already done. So our first step is to change this into a layer. And I am using Photoshop for this, though you can adapt these techniques to most other image editors as well. I'm changing it to a layer right now because it will become important later on and this way we won't forget. So our first step is to select our pen tool, which may surprise you. You may have thought that I was going to use uh, a crop tool or maybe even a lasso tool, but I find for this, a pen tool gives you a lot more flexibility. And so what I'm doing right now is that I'm using my pen tool to click in all the corners of the artwork. And I'm quickly sliding around the piece. and back to the original corner. Now the big reason why you want to use the pen tool is because you have to kind of evaluate how much error you want. Most lenses from most cameras are going to introduce some distortions, so you probably aren't going to get an actual perfect crop of your artwork. But if you use the pen tool, it does give you the ability to go in later, click your path selection tool, and you could manipulate where your corner is so you get a more accurate representation of where the edges of your artwork are. For example, here, I want to move it a little bit to the edge. And just go around your art to make sure that you haven't missed anything. And this looks OK. So I'm going to hit Control-0 to get me back to my full screen display. And as you can see, I now have a pen outline of path outline of my artwork. So I'm going to go into my paths dialog and convert my work path to a selection. I'm going to go back to my layers palette. Now with this selected, I'm going to go into image and crop. And I'm going to hit Control or Command D to get rid of my marching ants. So now we have our picture cropped and fit into a frame as tightly as it can from corner to corner. But as you can see, it doesn't fit exact because I took the picture of this artwork at a bit of an angle. And this is where the magic sort of comes in. 
So I told you before to note the size of your artwork. So what we're going to do is to go into image size. We're going to make sure that resample image is not clicked on. We want this box clear. And we're going to change the height to a little bit more than the height of our artwork. In this case, I'm going to set it to 20 inches plus 2 tenths of an inch. It's important to note that both the width and the height need to be larger than what you what your actual artwork is. If they aren't, then adjust whichever one makes the difference and always make it a little bit larger of what than what you are targeting and click OK. So now we're going to go into view, new guide, and we're going to put in a vertical guide at our 16 inch mark, which is the width of our piece. And we're going to do something similar for our vertical mark, but we're going to put a horizontal line and position it so that it's 20 inches to reflect the height of our artwork. We are also going to go into view and we're going to make sure that snap is clicked on and snap to that guides is also clicked on. This will be important later. So now we're, we're going to go about and go into transform, skew, and we're going to manipulate our image so that it fits into the box bounded by these two sides and the two guidelines that we've drawn. The reason we use skew is that you can move it in a horizontal direction or a vertical direction, but you can't move it both ways at once. I found that this gives you a lot greater control over how the image is going to behave when you're stretching it. So I've got that corner down and lift it up to the top. This corner needs to get stretched just a little bit this way. This bottom corner is going to get lifted up. And I will tell you that sometimes you, you can err a little bit. If you have a, a little bit of trouble of uh, as I'm having here, of the sticking to lines, and you might not want them to, hold down your control or command key, and that allows the snapping to turn off temporarily while you're pressing down the key. And I'm going to move this one in and this up. As you can see, I have a little bit of distortion, but sometimes this actually goes away once you hit enter to select the transformation. This didn't so much. In this case, I'm not too concerned about losing a little bit of this edge. It's, that's fine for me. So now what we're going to do, we're going to select our crop tool, and we're going to make sure that all of this is not selected. If necessary, hit your clear button. And we're going to now let snapping take care of hitting our endpoints for our crop tool. Hit enter to accept that. Now, if we go into our image, image size box, you can see that we now have an image that's 20 by 16 inches. And I should probably mention that if you want to get rid of these guides, because that could be annoying uh, if you're going to continue working on this, you can clear guides and they will go away. So now you have a cropped image in the correct proportion that is now a good representation of your original artwork. Don't forget to save it and uh, use it as you will. I hope this tip was useful. Please press the like button subscribe if you find these videos useful, and I'll see you next time.